Hi friends, it's Shari. Today I have a really cute card to share with you using the Porcupine For You stamp set and I'm coloring with colored pencils. So to start out, I have my images that I'm using, which is the two porcupines, the little mushroom, and the snail. I'll be stamping these with black licorice ink. So instead of jet black, I'm using the black licorice ink because I am coloring with colored pencils today rather than Copic markers. And black licorice is a perfect ink for colored pencils. I've just put these on a block and I'm stamping them on some Nina white paper or some Lawn Fawn white paper. And I'm pulling out my Prismacolor pencils to color with today. And I love coloring with colored pencils. I just forget to do it because it's a little more time consuming than Copic sometimes, but I don't have a lot of images here, so I thought I would share this with you today. I do like to use my color chart to see my colors, and I do like to blend my colors with Gamsol. I have my Gamsol in this little bottle from Inky Antics, I refill it with the bottle on the left, but I like this bottle because of the little dauber top that it has. I think it's easy to put the Gamsol onto my paper blending stumps. And you can see I keep a whole bunch of these. They're pretty inexpensive in my little case here. I basically have a paper blending stump for every color of the rainbow, and that's what I use to do my blending. So I'm actually going to pull out the one with like the browns and the creams and set those here with my pencils and I'll put the rest to the side. So I've already pulled out some colors and set them to the side. For the porcupine quills, I'll be using two shades of brown. I'm using sienna brown and burnt ochre. So the sienna brown is the darker color that I'm coloring right now. And my little tip for colored pencils is start with a little, you can always add more. You can never really take it away. I mean, you can erase it if it gets too much, but it's a lot easier to add more than try to remove it. So I went in with the lighter color filled in, and now I'm going back with the darker color again. And I like the look of colored pencils like this without blending them as well. I think they have a really kind of whimsical look, um, but I will blend it with the Gamsol so you can see it both ways. And I do feel like the Gamsol kind of smooths it out and you get sort of a, I like to call it a storybook look. It's a definitely a lighter coloring than you get with markers. So I've just taken my blending stump and I've turned my Gamsol bottle up so it's at the dauber top and just push down and soak some of that into the tip of the blending stump and I'm just kind of coloring over what I've already done. This breaks down the wax of the pencil and blends those colors together nicely. You can always go back and add more which is what I did there and you can see how that kind of smoothed it out and changed the color a bit. So now I'm moving on to the body of my porcupine and I pulled out my beige pencil and I'm just putting a layer of this all over. And I actually did decide I needed to pull in a bit darker color so I'll go back to my box of pencils over here and I'm going to pull out the ginger root pencil. It's a little bit darker but that same kind of creamy tone and this will allow me to add some shadows in there. So I'll just add shadows on the belly and the feet, especially that one that's in the background, along the line of his quills and under his arms and chin. Then I can find my blending stump that has light, light cream color on it. You wanna make sure you don't grab the ones with the brown because it will add some brown to this. So you wanna make sure you have one for all your colors. You can, of course, kind of use the sandpaper and get that color off and reuse the same stump, but they're really inexpensive and it's just easier to buy one for each color. So I've blended that out and then I'm adding a little pink to his ear. I'll add a little pink cheek and then some brown for his nose. So here is that first porcupine and then I'll just color the second one exactly the same way, starting with that dark and then the light of the brown and then I'll do the body. So now I have both of my porcupines colored and they are just so cute. Of course, I'm adding that little pink cheek to that one as well. And I just think that they're so cute. I love the look of colored pencils. 
So now I'm moving on to that little tiny mushroom. I am using two shades of orange, a darker and a lighter. And you can be kind of rough with this if you're going to blend with the Gamsol. I've grabbed my orange blending stump and I'll just blend that out really quickly. For the spots in the stem, I'm using that same beige color that I used for the porcupine's bodies. That's the lighter of the two colors. And then for the snail, I love coloring a snail purple. I don't know why, but I will grab some purples. I have the Parma Violet, which is my darker purple. And then I believe I have some lilac as my lighter. And I've just added a little of the dark at the bottom and then the lighter on top. You can go in and add a little bit more of the dark. Then I'll grab my purple blending stump and kind of smooth out that pencil. For the body of the snail, I'll pick up that same beige pencil and just add some beige and that ginger root, a little bit of shadow on the bottom so that he matches my porcupines. Everything is kind of that same tone. So I am going to use the coordinating dies to trim these out and a lot of times I cut this out of my video, but I wanted to keep this in and share a little tip. Colored pencils sit on top of the paper rather than absorbing in like markers. So you want to make sure that you do not put your tape onto your colored image. So you can see there, I put my removable tape just on the edge of the die and the majority of the tape is off on the white piece of paper. Because that tape could possibly pull off the color if it touches your colored image, it's just something you want to be aware of when using your coordinating dies. So once I have all these dies lined up, I will run this through my die cut machine and have those cute little cutout images. Next up, I have a piece of cilantro cardstock and I'm going to cut all these lucky clovers from this green cardstock. I'm not quite sure which ones I'm going to use, so I'm just cutting them all out. And then I'm going to add some inking to the edges. So I'm using the grip mat inside of my stamp wheel platform. This will hold my die cuts down so I can easily add ink to the edges. I'm adding some Lawn Fawn Clover ink, which is a bit darker green, and I'm just using a small blending brush tool to add some darkness to the outside edges. I think this adds some definition to these die cuts and makes them stand out a bit more. So I'm just working my way through all of these die cuts. I do actually end up using almost all of them. That really big clover I did not end up using, so I just will put that aside and save it for another project perhaps. But I like the way this grip mat will hold these tiny pieces, especially this little bitty one, and I can just add that ink really easily. So. I also wanted to add some splatters to this with gold, so I'm just leaving them right on this grip mat, and then I'll add my gold metallic splatters. And then I'll just set these aside to dry before I put them on my project. And this grip mat is very easy to clean up because it's made out of the same material as our stamps. So you can see I'm picking them up here and then I'll just wipe this off with my chamois and clean it up very easily. So for my card, I will be using the Gummy Bears pattern paper, which I love, some mermaid cardstock, and some cilantro cardstock. I have one of the stitched oval stackables, and I'll be cutting the mermaid cardstock and the cilantro with that stackable. First, I'm taking that Gummy Bears paper and just cutting a panel down to four and a quarter by five and a half, so this will cover my card base and will be the background for my card. Then I'll take that stitched oval and cut that from some mermaid cardstock. This will be my little focal panel for my porcupines to be on. And then I'm going to cut one out of the cilantro as well. And this will be the ground so I don't need the whole oval cut. Now before I die cut the top of my green to look like a little hill, I do want to go ahead and add my sentiment. I'm using the stamp from the My Lucky Charm stamp set that says You're My Lucky Charm and I'll just stamp this in some black ink on the bottom. And I'm stamping this before I cut the top so that I can see how far up I need to cut the top of the green to create my hill. 
and make sure I have enough space for my sentiment. Now I could cut the top of this little hillside with a stitched hillside, but I already have my oval die out and it's the same sort of shape that I want. So I'm just going to use it to cut the top of my little grass at the bottom. So I'm just lining this up using my grid mat to make sure everything's kind of nice and straight and even. Then I will hold this in place with some removable tape and run it through my die cut machine. And here I have a little stitched hillside using the oval die. Now I can start to assemble my card. So first thing I'm going to do is add some adhesive to the back of that gummy bears paper and get that onto my card base. I just really love this paper. <laughs> I'm really glad that we have it back to where we can use it. Then I'm adding some foam squares to the back of my little green hill piece and I'm going to go ahead and attach that to my mermaid oval before I put it onto my card base. And this I think is easier to line it up when it's not on that plaid just yet. So I've got my little hillside on there and then I can add this whole oval to that card base. So I've just added some liquid glue and the reason why I'm using liquid glue for this part is because I can kind of put it on here and shift it around before that glue sets and make sure it's nice and straight and centered. I'm putting some foam squares on the back of my little porcupines and I'm figuring out where I want them to be. This guy's going to hold this clover. Now that's the biggest clover. I decided that one was a little too big. So I'm going to go and use the next size down. That's why I said that big clover did not get used. He was pretty big. He just kind of filled up my oval a bit more than I wanted. So I've pulled the liner tape off both those porcupines and put them in place. I'm actually going to kind of scoot them over just a little bit so that you can see my clover a little bit more. And then I'll glue this down to where it looks like that porcupine on the left is holding the clover in his paw. Then I'm taking some of my other clovers that I inked up and I'm using them to kind of sprinkle around like embellishments. So I've got that little one that I just glued flat. This one is overlapping the green at the bottom. So I'm adding a foam square to one of the petals and then just glue to the others. Then I will add one up here towards the top, making sure it's not too big. I want to make sure that that one in the center is really the one that stands out. And I like the look of these kind of overlapping the oval. I think that's a fun look. And then for this one at the bottom, I'm actually going to tuck it up underneath that cilantro cardstock. I will trim off the stem a little bit so that I can tuck that up under there. Just kind of working it around those squares that are up underneath there. And I really like this look with those clovers kind of scattered around. Now to add my other little images, I wasn't quite sure where I wanted these. I ended up deciding that I liked the mushroom in the center to kind of fill that void between the two porcupines. And then I put a thin foam square onto my snail and just popped him right here on the right side. I also wanted to add a little bow to the top of this oval. I thought that would be kind of cute. So I've pulled out some green lawn trimmings twine. I'm just going to tie a bow and then I will use a glue dot to adhere this to the top left of my oval. This adds some really fun dimension and texture to this card. And then finally, I want to add some shine. So I'm pulling out some iridescent bubbles and I've just kind of placed those around. I've got five because I like my embellishments like this to be in odd numbers. I'm figuring out where I want them to go before I go back through and I'll pick each one up and then just add a dot of glue and drop it back into place. And the Lawn Fawn glue tube, that glue dries clear so you won't see it once it's dry behind these iridescent bubbles. And then here is my finished card. I think it turned out so cute. I love that rainbow plaid in the background. I love the soft colors of the 
colored pencils on the porcupines and I just love those big clovers as well. So here's another look and I hope this has inspired you to take those little porcupines and see what other things you can do with them. Thanks so much for watching. Have an amazing day. Bye. Thank you.